I was away for a bit, teaching a block course in Austria. I enjoy being with students, though block courses are tiring for both sides, I imagine, and they allow little time to let ideas settle, wrestle with or discuss them. One of the greatest gifts that I fell into was the place and method that formed the first five years of my university education. I spent them at the International Theological Institute in Austria. We did not have lectures, but followed the seminar method. The idea was to take the great texts of theology and philosophy, have the authors themselves, as it were, lecture us in our rooms, and then we would come together in small seminars with the professor to discuss the texts. Throw in students from all different kinds of backgrounds and countries, and you get something that is both exhilarating and not infrequently frustrating. You might not get to the point you were hoping to, or sometimes you might not even get the point. But you make the questions your own. You're not just imbibing something pre-digested. You're wrestling with it. As fantastic as this seemed to me at the time, naturally also because of all the great friendships of those formative years, really a community of life, love and learning, I probably only realized how valuable these lessons were during my postgraduate studies at a normal university, where the task is generally just to listen and to repeat back to the professor. But that is a superficial way of knowing anything. It is second-hand knowledge in a very real sense. Questions and a toolkit for ordered thought may not without fail lead you to the right conclusion, but it will give you a leg to stand on to explore the world and what lies beyond.
I have a problem. We had a decent amount of rain over the last few days. When the house was first built, there was only a very narrow space in front of it. In the 80s, when it was first restored, a six-foot-high retaining wall was built to create this terrace. But the same terrace has been lowering over the decades. The retaining wall is bulging outwards and has been ever since I bought the house. But these cracks are new. They formed in just one day and these rains were nowhere near the worst I've experienced here. The house itself is built on rock from what I know, but if this terrace collapses under future heavy rains, it would bury half the garden under a rock and mudslide. So I have to do something. I have to get weight off the wall, maybe even lower the wall, which is complicated by the fact that it has a concrete ring on top stabilizing it. If I dismantle that, will I make it worse? I was not sure yet, but one thing had to be done regardless. I had to start digging.
I ran into my waste pipe that had disconnected with the shift of the earth. That was a quick fix. But now that I knew where the previous owners had placed it, I also had a limit on how deep I could dig here. 300 millimeters of rain, or roughly a foot of rain soaking into the ground, I calculate, adds about 3 tons to the most affected area. Now, if I remove 3 tons of earth from that section, even in the event of such rain, the wall would not get any additional pressure. If on top of that I seal the ground and divert the water away, the soil underneath will stay dry and not get heavier with rain. So that is the plan, and it will hopefully save the wall and my garden. Thank <laughs> you. 
ma dai, ciao, buongiorno vicino. Vieni pure. Ah, spero che finisce a qualche punto. No, no, arriva l'anno temporale con tutta l'umidità che abbiamo. E devo, devo finire questo, ma... Fai pure, fai pure, ho passato lì adesso che non c'è vede più un palmo della mano adesso. Un palmo della... ah, è tutto verde. Oh, mamma mia. Ma bello anche, no? When I started this series, I briefly thought about putting no filter as a hashtag, indicating that the footage was not manipulated. But would that be accurate? I did not intend to play with the colors to change the aesthetics, but that doesn't mean that the footage is not filtered. Photos, and by extension videography, are, I dare say, very pleasing forms of lying. Not necessarily because they go through Photoshop or color correction, They don't always alter reality, but they always curate it. When I say they are lies, I mean that they are akin to lies by omission. For they don't show everything, but necessarily select an angle. When I show you these shots from a pilgrimage ten years back, I may be able to create, for some viewers, a sensation of wild beauty. Now, what you don't see in the image is the road, and I forget, maybe even a power line, running behind the camera. 
It was not a particularly ugly road or power line. It was part of reality. But it was not pretty, and I chose not to show it. I'm saying this because I do not want you to get the wrong impressions from these videos. That is also true of my person. People have visited over the past few years to do stories about my life and they have generally painted their portraits in a kind light. No surprise, really. The reason they came here was to find and show their viewers something they feel would be inspiring. But it is a truncated view of reality and I'm somewhat uneasy at the admiration that I've received in comments and messages on those occasions. So let me make this clear. I'm not a guru. I'm not a spiritual master. I'm not a person to aspire to meet or even talk to. You don't need me. You don't need to discern any secrets of happiness in my life or take me as an example. I am fundamentally like you. A man, a fallible man, a human. If you find any of the propositions in these videos helpful, if anything that is said rings true, or at least if any of the questions do, it is not because I am a source of wisdom. Truth is not something we make. It is something already there in the things as they are. It is something we merely discover. Reality, if you really seek it out, will have answers about who we are, how we are, and what we are called to be. If anything that I say is true, it is not because of me, but because of everything else. If on the other hand you watch these videos primarily because you find them pleasing, I'm happy you enjoy them. But enjoy them like a story, like one of these movies with a disclaimer based on real events, of which we all know that they take some liberties. The liberty here is not that I went looking for drama or to invent something to show to you, but as I said, that I chose not to show everything. If thirdly you find these videos not only instructive or relaxing, but inspiring, may they inspire you to live your own life. I'm not going to give you the hamster wheel talk, so popular with motivational speakers. I'm not going to tell you that you should leave the treadmill of ordinary life to follow wild dreams. I'm not suggesting you break out from your 9 to 5. I simply propose that you choose to lead an extraordinary life. And you do not have to go anywhere for that. I contend that a life is extraordinary only in as much as the ordinary things are done with an extraordinary amount of love. If you are married for 48 years and kindly put up with your spouse's frailties, your life is extraordinary. If you are a father who goes to work in an office not because of self-fulfillment, but just in order to put food on the table for your family of six, your life is extraordinary. If you're a single mother in tears, helping your teenage daughters to navigate this crazy world with the compass of virtue that many have forgotten, your life is extraordinary. If you have lost your wife to cancer, and after years of letting grief take over, you begin struggling to rid yourself of alcohol addiction, your life is extraordinary. If your sister gave you grief, but you chose to forgive her from the bottom of your heart, your life is extraordinary. If someone was unjust, but every day you overcome feelings of revenge, your life is extraordinary. Any of these lives, and many more like them, in fact are more extraordinary than a life in which one escaped to the woods on the slope of a mountain. They may be less Instagrammable, but they are more extraordinary because they require a greater love. For it is love that makes any life extraordinary.